أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الذي لا عز إلا في طاعته ولا فلاح ولا نجاح إلا في التذلل لعظمته هو الله الذي إذا أطعناه شكر وإذا عصيناه وتبنا إليه تاب وغفر هو الله الذي إذا دعوناه أجاب وإذا عاملناه أثاب سبحانه من إله حكم عدل قلوب عباده إليه مفضية وسرهم لديه علانية الغيب لديه مكشوف وكل أحد إليه ملهوف عنت الوجوه لنور وجهه ودلت الفطر على امتناع مثله وشبهه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله إلها واحدا أحدا جل عن الشبيه والنظير وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وأمينه على وحيه وحبيبه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله جل وعلا به الغمة وتركنا على محجة بيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فما أكرمه عبدا وسيدا وما أبهره أصلا ومحتدا صل اللهم عليه وعلى آله غيوث الندى بصلاة وسلام دائمين من اليوم إلى أن يبعث الناس غدا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وبعد اتقوا الله عباد الله في سركم وفي علنكم في ظاهركم وفي باطنكم فإن تقوى الله عز وجل هي الوصية في الأولين وفي الآخرين وهي خير زاد نلقى به رب العالمين وصان ربنا عز وجل بالتقوى في محكم التنزيل فقال عز من قائل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم 
وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وما قل وكفى خير مما كثر وألها وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين أما بعد أيها الأحبة في الله صحابة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كانوا يعتنون برمضان بشكل خاص جدا عناية فائقة يدعون ربهم عز وجل ستة أشهر اللهم بلغنا رمضان اللهم بلغنا رمضان اللهم بلغنا رمضان يلحون على ربهم عز وجل حتى إذا بلغهم سبحانه وتعالى شمروا عن سواعد الجد اجتهدوا وأروا ربهم عز وجل من أنفسهم خيرا حتى إذا انقضى رمضان انشغلوا بالدعاء اللهم تقبل منا رمضان اللهم تقبل منا رمضان اللهم تقبل منا رمضان So my brothers and sisters the companions of Rasulullah عليه الصلاة والسلام used to ask Allah عز وجل six months half of the year to deliver them to the month of Ramadan and once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts their dua and delivers them to the month of Ramadan, they used to show Allah Azza wa Jal their obedience, their truthfulness, their righteousness. They used to be diligent. And after Ramadan, they keep asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept their, their effort. So the month of Ramadan in their mind is something very important. Very important. The month of forgiveness, the month of mercy, the month of the Quran, the biggest chance for the sincere repentance and the acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I want every and each one of us to think for a little. How many people passed away and lost their life before Ramadan of this year? If you think by yourself, between you and yourself, you'll find names. You know somebody passed away before Ramadan. He did not make it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose you to be alive in the month of Ramadan, to get the chance to fast, to pray the taraweeh, to recite the Quran, to supplicate to your Lord, to donate your money for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to earn Allah's forgiveness, to attain piety. You got that chance. So we must be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must be thankful. Allah azza wa jal said in the Quran, وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ After he spoke to us about the month of Ramadan and the obligation of fasting, Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He sealed that with this word. So in order to be thankful to your Lord, you must fulfill the pillars of this thankfulness. Number one, to admit to the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To see the favor of Allah, to see the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to, rec to recognize the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. And number two is to love him for that. To love your Lord. The love that will make you submissive to Allah Azza wa Jal. The love that will make you obedient to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. The love that will make you work hard in the months of Ramadan to achieve your goals. And then to use this favor to please your Lord. A lot of people, when they pray, when they fast, when they recite Quran, when they make dua, when they spend money, they do it as if it is burden. They want to get rid of it. They come to it and they can't wait to run away. And some people got it right. Some people, they worship Allah to please Him, Azza wa Jal. Because once He is pleased, he will please you. If you please Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal will please you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we must be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by actions. 
الله عز وجل سد اعملوا آل داود شكرا so thankfulness is by actions not only by talk you talk yes you recognize the favor of your Lord and you thank him you praise him yes you love him by, by your heart for that and submit to him and obey him and you use his favor to please him your goal is to please Allah the the great certificate that the companions graduated from the school of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa with it was radiyallahu anhum wa radiyallahu anhum Allah has pleased with them as they were pleased with him subhanahu wa ta'ala so your goal my brother is to please Allah azza wa jal pray to please him perfect your prayer to please him recite the Quran in the way that pleases Allah Supplicate and raise your hand in the way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stand up in the taraweeh prayer in the way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Spend your money for his sake in the way to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the people in this month are not the same. Are not the same. The Prophet والسلام, mentioned that some people will be in Ramadan but they are not sincere, not truthful. They are hypocrites. The Prophet said, alayhi wa sallam, that this month is the best month for the believers. Abu Huraira narrated that. He said, هذا الشهر أظلكم شهركم هذا بمحلوف رسول الله ما مر على المؤمنين شهر هو خير لهم منه وما مر على المنافقين شهر هو شر لهم منه so this month is the best month for the believers, for the sincere Muslims, for the truthful people. And this month is the worst month for the hypocrites. And the people at the end of the month will be divided to two, two groups. Group accepted by Allah, won the mercy and the forgiveness and the pleasure of their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some people will be sent away, will be distanced from their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Striked by the supplication of Jibreel alayhi salam. Jibreel came to Prophet Muhammad alayhi salam. Hadith is very well known to all of you. And he made dua. And one of these duas that Jibreel made, oh Allah, oh Allah, the one who will get the chance of Ramadan and he will get out of it. And his sins are not forgiven. May Allah distance him. And Prophet Muhammad said, Ameen. Imagine a supplication was supplicated by Jibreel. The trustworthy of the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the one who said, Ameen, is Muhammad, the truthful, the trustworthy, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is an accepted supplication. So we need to worry and to be cautious and not to play in the month of Ramadan and to do our best. To please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will say this, and I will forgive Allah the Almighty, and I will say this, 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 and Many years, I used to visit this masjid in the second Friday of every Ramadan, except last year because of Corona. And you know, I come to raise awareness about our youth, about the future of Islam in this country and in the West in general. Wallahi al-Azim, a few days ago, Somebody was showing me the masajid of the Muslims. People are, are raising pigs in it, in Europe, in Spain, in Azerbaijan, in many European countries. Why? Because the Muslims there used to build the masajid, but they never built Muslims. Yes, we... Had generations raised and built 
This masajid, yes. But what happened? The next generation lost it. They don't know anything about Islam. Two days ago in my masjid in New Jersey, a father came to me and told me that his son left the house. He did not, he, he said he's not Muslim anymore. And by Allah, I'm swearing to you, while I'm fasting, this young man that he's talking about is half of the Quran from A to Z. Half of the Quran from A to Z. He is denying the existence of Allah. He is denying Islam entirely. Why? Because he, he is dead in this society, melt in this society, lost his identity. We are not working on human beings. We are not investing in human being anymore. So one of the projects that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided our Sheikh Dr. Salah al-Sawi here in America to start a, an Islamic university to invest in our youth, to invest in those who are who born and raised in this country, who are able to speak the language and to understand the, the culture, are able to communicate with the people of this society, to go to study in Mishka University and to, be, to become scholars. Teachers, so they work to keep the Muslims Muslims and to invite non-Muslims to Islam. And subhanAllah, this masjid is the biggest supporter to this Islamic university because your, your Shaykh and my Shaykh, Dr. Salah Sawi, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him, is the founder of this university and the leader of it. So you're always supporting. Every year we, we have about... 10 students supported by you to finish their education in this university. Because if you tell these students the education is free, yes, they may come, but we, you will never be able to function as a university. You'll never be able to, to offer them what they need. If you told them you must pay, they will tell you, I cannot pay because I'm already studying engineering or medical science or this or that. I cannot pay for two colleges at the same time. They will drop. So we, we got this idea to speak to the Muslims, to invest in their kids, to invest for their future, and to do this ongoing charity. Imagine when you sponsor a student to study four years in college and to graduate as a scholar, high-level student of knowledge, da'i, you will get the reward of his studying during these four years. When he graduate, if he wrote a book, you will share his reward. If he delivered the khutbahs, you will share his reward. If he issued fatwas, you will share his reward. Everything he does in his life, even if he educated new generation of students, you still get in your share, you started this. It is ongoing charity. It is continuous charity. It is the best investment to do, Wallahi, for us to be able to fulfill the obligation of da'wah in this land. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in his book, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنْ اتَّبَعَنِي so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam to say that his job on earth is to invite people to Islam, to guide people to their Lord, to their creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he said, upon knowledge, upon knowledge, we need basira. And then he said, not only the Prophet, even the followers of the Prophet, the believers, they must participate in this mission after the departure of their prophet from earth. It is our mission. The prophet said, Deliver at least one verse. But in this country, it is not enough for somebody just to, to, to deliver a verse. We need a squads of dua in this country. Not only to bring the Muslim to Islam, to keep the Muslims Muslims. 
Because if we didn't do that, we're going to lose them. And I said this to you before, and I will repeat it again. The immigrants are not enough. The shiuch that you see coming from overseas like, like me and my Sheikh Sheikh Salah are not enough. We need the kids of this country. We need those who are born and raised here. And it, it will happen by your support. And remember, your Prophet said, والسلام, the best sadaqah is sadaqah in Ramadan. This is the best sadaqah, the best time, the most rewardable charity. And Prophet Muhammad, والسلام, as it is reported in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim, narrated by Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, ibn Abbas said, كان, رسول, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود الناس. The most generous person, alayhi salatu wassalam. This is the role model of the Muslims, the idol of the Muslims, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He used to be very generous, alayhi salatu wassalam. And he said, وَكَانَ أَجْوَدُ مَا يَكُونَ فِي رَمَضَانِ حِينَ يَتِهِ جِبْرِيلِ فَيُدَرِسُهُ الْقُرْآنِ The Prophet, alayhi wasallam, at his best, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, at, at his best, in his generosity, during Ramadan, when Jibreel comes to review the Quran with him, and he used to come every single day to review the Quran with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So reviewing the Quran every day bring the best of you. And you are reviewing the Quran during Ramadan, reading and hearing the Quran during the Taraweeh. And the Prophet was described like a speedy wind, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Karih al Mursala. You ask, you ask him about something, he gives you. And alhamdulillah, we work and we make money. And we spend for this dunya, we buy house, the best car, the best clothes, the best food, and save for future. We need to save for the future, the real future, the future after death. The future after death. This is the real future. This dunya will go away. And the real future is... The life after death. So some people are very rich in dunya, and they will be resurrected very poor in akhirah. Maybe some people live a limited life in dunya, but they are the most rich in akhirah, in the jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised you. This is not my promise. It is not a promise of any shaykh or any teacher, or any imam, or any da'i. This is the promise of Allah, that when you give money, he considers your giving, he considers your donation as loan upon himself, for you to understand that he will pay you back. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he said, وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَهُوَ يُخْلِفُهُ Whatever you spend, Allah will replace it. And the Prophet swore alayhi salatu wassalam, and said, he swore upon three things. One of these three things, he said, That means what, whatever you give sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never diminish your wealth. In fact, will be a reason that you will be increased financially. You will be increased. Allah said, If you are thankful to your Lord by action, Allah will increase you. No question about that. And if Allah said, I will replace you, you will find in the Quran that this, this replacement is not money for money, is not hundred for hundred, or thousand for thousand, or ten thousand for ten thousand. No, Allah said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ حَبَّةِ أَنْبَتَتْ سَبْعَ سَنَابِلْ فِي كُلِّ سُنْبُلَةِ مِئَةُ حَبَّةِ وَاللَّهُ ضَعِفُ لِبَيْ the example of the one who spent for the sake of Allah, like a seed, grows seven spikes, and every spike hundred seeds, and Allah multiplies to whomever He wills, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to back our institutions in this country. We need to support our masajid. You know how much our Islamic organizations suffered during Corona. Badly suffered. Alhamdulillah that they are still open. Alhamdulillah. And every year, I used to come here to ask you to sponsor 10 students to finish their bachelor degree. 
And every student to finish four years of education must pay $10,000 throughout these four years. So if you make the pledge to sponsor a student of knowledge and write the pledge, pay whatever you're able now and delay whatever you need to delay. But for, remember your promise to Allah and fulfill this promise as soon as you're able. And put in your book of good deeds this investment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about hasanat of akhirah. Wallahi al-azim, you will never regret doing that. You will never regret. Once you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet used to stand up to encourage the Muslims to spend their money for the sake of Allah. It is an action of worship. Some people, they ask me, how come you are able to stand up in front of Muslims to tell them, give your money, give your money? Uh, yes, I'm able to do that because the Prophet did that. The best human being on earth used to stand up in the masjid to tell who gave for the sake of Allah, who gives for the sake of Allah. And people used to show him their submission to their Lord and their generosity and their loyalty. They used to stand up and to say, I donate, I donate. Hundred camels, O Messenger of Allah. Another hundred camels, another hundred camels. They keep giving for the sake of Allah. You know, Uthman, in the day of Tabuk, he kept giving hundred by hundred by hundred until the Prophet said, Nothing will harm Uthman after today. Nothing. He guaranteed what he was looking for. He was looking for the pleasure of his Lord, the, accept, the acceptance of his Lord, and he got it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looked into his heart, and he found this person is real Muslim, sincere, truthful, committed, loyal, generous. So he deserves the pleasure of his Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I know in the time of Corona, after the Salah, everybody ran away very quickly after the Salah, and I, I, I'm, I'm asking you, to take advantage of this. Yes, Islam and Muslims will be benefited from your donation. The students will be benefited. But you are the first person who will benefit from this. You are the, best, the first one. Do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah azza wa jal accept from all of you. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan wa arzuqna attiba'a. Wa arina al-batila batilan wa arzuqna jitinaba. اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم تقبل صيامنا اللهم تقبل قيامنا وأجب دعاءنا اللهم بلغنا ليلة القدر يا سميع الدعاء اللهم لا تحرمنا خيرها ونورها وبركته وهداها عظيم الإحسان اللهم خذ اليوم من أموالنا حتى ترضى اللهم خذ اليوم من أموالنا حتى ترضى اللهم خذ اليوم من أموالنا حتى ترضى يا عظيم الإحسان يا حي يا قيوم يا رب العالمين يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكن لأنفسنا طرفة عين اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا أجمعين وهب المسيئين للمحسنين اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا أجمعين وهب المسيئين منا للمحسنين اللهم اغفر ذنوبنا أجمعين وهب المسيئين منا للمحسنين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله أقم الصلاة